$400,000 Pavati boat. We just teamed up with Heavy D, Diesel Dave, and the crew. And if you want to see how we pulled it out, stay tuned. Like, how do we even start this? We're meeting up with Heavy D, Dave Sparks from Diesel Brothers. I don't want to say that he may have sunk a boat, but I'm going to say he may have sunk his boat. Yeah, I mean, when you said 40 foot, I mean, I understand what 40 feet is. But why does it look so much bigger, huh? Oh, what is going on? Dude, when, uh, when I saw them around a bend on the freeway and they were like like six miles ahead of us, yeah, it would look like bigger than any of the, the semis. It's just a monster. Oh, it's boat. a beautiful yeah. boat. Right? If we have a big adventure going on. Yeah, this is gonna be a hell of an adventure. Listen, why don't you fill everybody in as to what really happened with Ooh. the, we're going down to Lake Powell. I haven't even, I just, I just, all I did was a teaser of a, I'm just gonna say, they may or may not have sunk a boat. A boat. I haven't even told my channel yet. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now what happened. I got a brand new Pavati. Now you guys know Pavati's, they're, uh, they're pretty fancy boats. I, I got a great relationship with them. I've been working with them for two, three years. I've never had a single problem with the boats. It's a small company up out of Oregon. Uh, they started off making truck products, like high, or semi-truck headache racks. Uh -huh. And then they built little drift boats and then they got into these wakeboard boats. And it's an all aluminum wakeboard boat. So they give me this new boat, refurbished. Everything's like brand new. Take my family, just me, my wife, and my three kids. And we're just going to bow for Labor Day. Just floating around, having a good time. We're on the water Saturday, floated around, no big deal. We didn't do any surfing or anything. We were just kind of cruising around. Um, Sunday, same thing. We go up a canyon, floating around, just hanging out. Um, and then at the end, as we were getting ready to head home, my daughter, Charlie's like, hey, I want to surf before we leave. So I'm like, okay. So I hit the ballast tank on the Pavati, which holds 4,000 pounds of water in their ballast. It's a huge ballast. It runs the whole length of the boat on both sides. And the way it opens is gravity. So it's four inch gate valves. These valves open and it just sinks the boat right away. And so I'm used to seeing the back of the Pavati like, you know, normally when you're fully loaded, the back of the boat is like literally touching the water, like the top of the back of the boat. And so we're sitting there and we're in the middle of the channel and I'm getting ready to start surfing. And uh, I see something pop up on the screen about bilge pump, like not working but it had been flashing on and off, so I, I didn't really pay a ton, a ton of attention to it because these boats can hold a lot of water. Next thing you know, my wife says, my wife says, Dave, the back of the boat's under the water. And I'm like, I know, we're surfing, that's the way it goes. And she's like, no, no, look. So I turn around, I look, and it's like up over the engine compartment. So I'm like So I hammer down towards the shore. We're in the channel, which is just canyon walls, and uh, and then the engine takes in water and quits. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm from here to your motorhome, maybe maybe 50 yards. So I, the boat's not gonna sink immediately. So I grab the anchor, jump off the front of the boat and start swimming to shore with the anchor because I want to anchor it off uh -huh. just in case it starts to sink. I get about 10 yards and I hear my wife scream, Dave! I look back and I see the tip of the Pavati go bloop, just like the Titanic. And then my kids bail off, my wife bails off. Luckily, everybody was safe, life jackets, everything like that. And then the boat just disappeared. Dude, as, as a dad, I mean, like, <laughs> I, what, like, 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 you're like one, two, three, like. Yeah, no, it was, but my family, dude, it was like we trained for it. Like, the kids were like, they knew exactly what to do, jumped off the bow. Uh, Mac was on the back, my youngest, my wife, she grabbed him, and everybody had their life jackets, and they were just floating. And then it was just a full blown yard sale of everything that floats. So, all of our buoys and all of our stuff. And then literally the boat was just gone within 10 seconds. So it turns out, um, I think there was a bilge pump failure. And then also uh, we believe that the plug uh, got wrapped around the ski rope when we were just dicking around on the shore. Right. Pulled a little pin up, that pulled the plug out. Oh. And that happened right before we opened the gate valves and the ballast. Right. So it was just like the perfect storm of terrible things. And, I, and, and here's where I want to stop it real quick, you know, because we promote a lot of life jacket safety. And right. you sent me pictures before any of that happened. You sent me pictures of your family enjoying Labor Day, and every single one of your kids was on the boat with a life jacket. We don't want mom without it, dude. Yeah, regardless of what size boat you're on, it doesn't matter what size your boat, especially yeah. the kids. Yep. And whether you're a good swimmer or not, unfortunately, this is why, you know, we're out dude, looking for people too many times. In 20, 30 seconds. Right. Like you think you've got time, but you don't. So had my kids not had life jackets on, it would have been us trying to scramble to grab the kids. Yeah, dude, it was, it was, I mean, literally, it was like we trained for it. Yeah. So yes, life jackets, no matter what. Like even my wife wears a life jacket on the boat. 
if it's like rough waters or anything like that. But this was just one of these freak accidents that it wasn't Pavati's fault. Uh, it was, I mean, I guess it's my fault because I wasn't paying too close attention to the bilge pump and if the plug popped out. So uh, as it sank, I remember seeing right before it went under, the depth meter said roughly 100 feet, but it's in the channel. So that could have been a shelf where it could have tumbled off once it got down there. So water level is 25 feet lower than it was now or then. So luckily, hope if all is perfect, the boat's at 75 feet, maybe. Um, the bodies are really heavy boats. They're all aluminum. Uh, they weigh like 6,500 pounds dry. So it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be an inter interesting one. And I also just kind of have a vague memory of the general area. That's why your sonar is gonna be huge. Uh, but what was crazy? The crazy part about all of this is stuff's floating everywhere. My family's in the water. Everybody's trying to gather their bearings to figure out what's going on. Within 15 seconds of that happening, a boat kind of like this one but not as cool uh, the patrol boat comes out of the canyon that we were just in and they're just on patrol and they just happen to see this yard sale and a family floating in the water so it's like sir no swimming here yeah. we need to get you out of the yeah, water they, now they roll up and they're like where's your boat and we're like it just sunk and i'm sitting there like no life jacket on because i, I was trying to save the family or save the boat with the anchor right. so I got, I got like an anchor it, actually what happened was when Ashley screamed at that exact same time, the anchor rope pulled on me. And I was like, oh, something's like, that's not right. Right. Um, and so I let, I let go of it. And I was just sitting there, you know, swimming. And I swam back to the family. And the, be <laughs> the best part about all of this is I had this backpack. My backpack is like my crown jewel. I keep everything important in there. And it happened to have like a lot of cash because I just sold something like 30 grand cash. And everything in the else in the boat sunk. My wife's purse, all that stuff, anything that doesn't really float. I was really hoping you were gonna say that 30 grand sunk. And then it'd be like, you know, <laughs> if you find it, finders Dude, keepers, no, you know. The best part. So as I'm swimming, as I gather the family and everything, and we're swimming back towards kind of shore, waiting for the patrol boat. Here comes my backpack, bobbing along right next to me. There was nothing buoyant in there, but the bag was like full of air somehow, and it didn't sink, and I grabbed it, and I had my passport. It had literally my, my life in it. And so I grabbed the backpack, grabbed whatever else we could, jumped on the patrol boat, and then they took us back to the marina and said, good luck. It was the weirdest experience. They were so calm about it, because I think they were so confused. Because normally when boats sink in pallet, it's people hitting rocks, hitting sandbars. We were not doing anything. We were stationary when all of a sudden it just goes. So it'll be interesting to see once we get to it to kind of figure out what actually happened. So that is the start to an amazing trip that we're heading from. I came from Oregon. Yeah. You're in Salt Lake. Yeah. We're heading to Lake Powell. I bought a boat out of Missouri, this River Rhine patrol boat, which is the Navy SEALs most infamous, like their favorite boat. This boat has twin 500 horsepower diesel engines. We've got a thousand horsepower twin jet drive that can operate in about 12 inches of water. So, and it cruises at like 50 knots. We don't have to worry about 12 inches of water. You're in 75 yeah. to 125 well, feet of water. No, we're worried because the launch ramps are all out of the water. So that's why we have a telehandler. We have a six by six army truck. We've got literally one of everything because we're gonna be launching probably off of a cliff. So. so if you've not seen Dave here from Diesel Brothers with his channel and all the amazing above water yeah. recoveries, they are insane. You have to go check them out and subscribe to them. Yep. If you've not heard of them, my viewers probably never heard of you. So never, yeah, I mean, you're gonna have so many new subscribers because yeah, it's of this. Funny. You're the first, you literally were my first phone call. I called you after it happened. I'm like, hey, my boat sank. Can we go get it? And you're like, well, our schedule is crazy. Let's figure out how to do it. But it's good that we chose this time of year because the water's the lowest right now. Oh, so yeah. it was good that your schedule was busy and this all lined up. And actually the owner of Pavati, Chuck, cool dude. He's just like a, a uh, like a twin to Diesel Dave. Um, he'll be down there. So he'll be on the boat and watching the recovery with <laughs> us. We also have another pontoon boat that's meeting us down there. So we've got the equipment. You see, we mounted a 18,000 pound winch on the front of that just in case an airbag didn't you know, do what it was supposed to do. I think it'll be fine. You said boats are easy. I mean, if you got an 18,000 on that, I'll just take that straight down instead of the lift bag. You really could. I mean, really, that's actually safer. Yeah. I mean, that way we're not blowing it and we have less to rig with. As long as the, as long as the boat, the leverage of the front of the boat doesn't get too gnarly, yeah. it should be fine. And so. really in water, it's really more, it's almost a neutral buoyancy right. for yeah. the boat in water anyway. Yeah. So best of above, above water, yep. search and recovery crew, best below, best water. below water, coming together. This yeah. is one episode. Again because our last episode was wild. Yeah. 
Our last episode was like really wild. You're going to want to check that out in the description down below where yeah. we uh, recovered a vehicle from 82, yeah. 90 feet deep. But, so, some, but, somebody but, said 180. I don't know who said that one time. Anyway, it wasn't true. It was deep. There was deep little pockets in there. Yeah. The boat was there. The car was at like 80 or something. Yeah. But the, we were at like almost 6,000 feet elevation. So you guys were having all sorts of like night you know oxygen issues and all kinds of oh, stuff yeah. like that down at lake powell luckily it's only like three thousand feet so your dive time could be a little bit better hopefully i don't know we'll see but it's going to be a hell of a ride that was a long intro and that's how we're starting this some nice beautiful drone shots as we're pulling out of here we'll see you in lake powell And even though I said that I was going to go in the boat with Doug first, you really do get the first boat ride as you guys take this over to Heavy D's boat. I got to get this RV up and out of here. That's a long way to back that thing back up, so I hope I can get it turned around right here. Amazing visibility here. Beautiful Lake Powell, Utah. Heavy D and Diesel Dave. $400,000 boat. I am super excited. These circumstances are drastically different and everything else we deal with. It's a breath of fresh air. I'm so stoked. Let's go, big guy. Woo! One pull. Water 70 degrees at the surface. Um, means where we're going at about 100 feet deep, we're looking at like 40, 45 degree water easily it's gonna be cold are you planning on having the rv near where we are going right now we are going to have it i have no idea i don't have that answer okay if we separate from our rv i'm gonna need my thermals which are in the back corner behind the tv thank you for always having my back Absolutely. Hey, I'm glad we moved this up to 5 watt because we're up the road quite a ways and those other radios that we had would have never uh, hit this distance. Oh no, not at all. These Garmin GPS radio units are absolutely amazing. Which, by the way, uh, I'll make an announcement to the audience right now. Garmin is incredible. They've stepped up. Uh, they have provided us with four of these new radios as well as new sonar equipment. And uh, they are really going to be helping us out with that second uh, search team in the entire setup on that. Uh, boat and the rig as well so thank you to Garmin for stepping up and really helping us out with everything we're out here doing not just for something fun like this but for the entire purpose of an adventure with a purpose to get out there and help these families big shout out to Garmin by far leading in their industry in the multiple industries that they're in and for helping us obtain the equipment we need actually just giving it to us, making sure that we have what we need, as much as we need. They love what we're doing, and they want to help us. If you take a second here to look at the, the rock face here, where it stops, it goes from white to a red clay color. Those are the normal water levels here. That's how far down Lake Powell is right now and you're looking at you know 50 to 75 feet right there easily which is playing right into our playbook because it's gonna take 75 feet off this dive depending on exactly how deep this is it, it's gonna drastically change the depth that we have to dive to reach this boat today you know are we talking about 75 foot dive are we talking about 125 foot dive 150 foot we really don't know yet until we i get there and i locate the boat and we get it scanned. Coming off the boat. Yeah. Yeah. I think we are pretty much ready to go recover this boat. So buckle up, this is gonna be a wild ride. We just got yelled out for going too fast in the wake zone where all the boats are at down here in Lake Powell. These boats used to be spread out a lot more, but as the water keeps going down, this little channel keeps getting smaller and smaller. 
As part of where we're at in the process, everybody is now loaded up. There's been one item that has been forgotten. So we're gonna swing by the ramp real quick, pick that up, head out eight to 10 miles is what I've been told. Yeah. I thought it was a lot closer. So I'm glad we didn't try to take the little, a little sometimes we yeah. joke about it and we're like, hey, it's a dinghy. But really, I mean, it is our work boat. Anyway, we put the work boat on the back of the uh, of this nice big river boat here. Head up there, eight to 10 miles. Put it in, sonar. Doug does that amazing sonar, and uh, he's gonna find it. That's right, we're gonna find it. Once we get outside these tires, then we'll be able to open her up and, uh, and get cruising. power we have twin diesel engines 500 horsepower a piece so we're on our way to do this dive we don't know if it's 75 feet or 150 feet yeah because there's a shelf there right and it can... so with that being said what do you think the most challenging aspects of this is going to be Sonar up against a cliff is always the most challenging because the way that we've explained it before, and I'll kind of explain it for you know somebody that's never seen one of our videos. Think about being in a dark room with a flashlight and somebody up against the wall. If they're up against the wall, there's no shadow behind them. But if you pull them back from a wall, a boat away from a cliff, now when you shine that flashlight on it, now you're gonna see a silhouette. And so that's our challenge and then kind of the best way to explain it. The farther the away from a wall, the easier it will be to find. The closer, the more difficult. And then the deeper it is, the more challenging it is as well, because really our sonar is good. You know, 40, 45 feet is really like the optimum 45 and shallower. We have found boats at 85 feet before. At 100, 120, it's gonna be, I'm gonna say like a 4% chance at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's the sonar definitely going to be a next level for the stuff that we're used to. But I have faith in our awesome Garmin unit that it'll find it. You know, we'll see. You guys will see. Stay tuned. So basically, this is called Moki Canyon. I jumped off, hoping to be able to swim to that rock right there as it was kind of slowly starting to sink with the anchor in my hand, trying to anchor it off. And uh, that's when I felt the anchor tug on my arm, pull me back, I heard a scream, look back, and the tip of the boat was doing the Titanic like this, it just went straight down. So it's somewhere in here. I have a couple of concerns and fears. I don't know how deep the boat is gonna be. You know, you see how tall that, that sheer drop off is. I mean, you're looking at, to the water line is 120 to 150 feet, plus another, you know, how deep is it down below that this is a complete shift, you know, drop off. But then, you know, what kind of a shelf do we have? Do we have a shelf like this to where it's only 20 feet deep and the shelf is the boat just happens to be sitting on something like that? Or did it then come over the shelf where the boats are at and it drops even further down another 50 to 100 feet? Until we put the sonar in in our boat, <laughs> I, don't, I simply don't know. This is, without a doubt, one of the most challenging sonar scans we've ever done. Oh yeah. yeah. Will it be the most difficult recovery? I don't think so. I mean, boats are actually really easy to recover. It's just a matter of finding it, getting down to it. Thank you. Uh, we need, uh, blue line as well. Blue line next, Matt Moss. this go where hands is at and then he's he's the one that's hanging out on the um, rock all by himself yeah. that's where heavy D was trying to swim the anchor to is over to that pile of rocks up there because it was up another 25 right feet probably but it may not be that far out so I would take the line sh straight through here but anyway what I was saying though is if you go straight out from where hands is at and then you can see what the contour is as it's dropping down, so that way you have a good reading. It's coming back up now. Yeah, you better hurry, because Hans is getting a sunburn over there. You don't want to be on that rock all day. Dude, he looks really relaxed. 
<laughs> All right, so it won't be this far over. So take this line and just come straight out past him and get, get, get a good reading. 72 feet here, so we're, 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 we're in uh, hopefully better water. All right, so just head straight out from here. We're 65 feet right now. Still at 65. Big drop off right now. 70. Are we still at 70? 100 feet, just went to 100 feet. All right. So we got good readings coming in and out like that. Directly in and out. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so we'll cut just that way. Have to keep... just, just stay tight. Yeah. Only go over like 20 feet each time. It's gonna be a hard find. Oh no, this is gonna be a really hard find based upon what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's just, it, everything is, it's, it's like huge canyon, cliff, boulders everywhere. Did you find it? I think I did. We might have it. Right, right here. So you were right about here when you said it. So tell me it's in 75 feet of water. Found it. We may have it. It's gonna be right, right about here. It's probably just a rock like that. Uh, what looked like a boat in the canyon. It, it, it could be. I mean, you just gotta get a really good angle. I, th I think so. I think so. But man, everything down here looks like a boat. Everything looks like a boat. You see that? Uh, looking at live scope? Yeah, I'm looking at live scope. Yeah, live scope. Uh, I don't know. Not that. Is that it right there? See it? See it? What's that? Right there. See what's that? What's that? Oh, oh, I see. Is that it? I think so. It looks like a boat. You're right over the top of it right now. Right here, you're right over the top of it, right there. Oh, actually, you're kind of just right that. So you need to get that facing straight down and get right over the top of it. Now you're too far that way, I think. Flip, flip the boat around, do a 180. Right, right, right below us, right there. Is that it? Back up, back up. Hold on. Coming back, just to the side of where we were. Come a little bit over, more towards the rock. That's it. That's 100% a boat. I, I, I'm pretty sure that that's a boat. Absolutely. So, it's definitely going to be a lot deeper than we thought. That's 125 to 130 over there. Yeah. 123 feet on this side, 119 on that side. Nothing out here has looked like that. Five feet away? Yep. Right off of that. Right there. Alright, so we need to get our equipment. Right up that, right up that, right there. Find it again. Yeah. You found Dave's boat. Found my boat. Found your boat. Your boat is sitting upright. Towers up. Really? It's gonna be an easy pick. What's the bottom look like right there? Then the boat's at 95 feet right now. 95 feet. 95 feet. Ooh, and this that is, is deeper than the other, the uh, forerunner that yeah. we uh, recovered. Yeah. But our elevation is lower. That's perfect. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, uh, we're gonna take the 85 and the other blue line as well as the. Grappling hook and the buoy. All right, we're gonna go mark it. And by marking it, this is gonna give us a solid line that we're within either right on it or within a few feet that we'll be able to just drop right on it. And we're gonna bump right up against that wall. Got it, got it, I got it. Yep. I am on it. So tie this off tight, so that way we don't lose any tension on it. All right, we're gonna shoot up. Yeah, Who was your diver first, last time that he only made like 20 feet? Where's he Ethan, been? Ethan, and, uh, and he was supposed to come. Was <laughs> no. You should have seen Ethan Godfrey, or Ethan Roberts last time, up at East Canyon. He was so confident, I'm a diver, yeah, I'll go down with you guys. He jumps in, he's underwater for like maybe, maybe 30 seconds and just come burst into the surface. And he only, and he he thought he was at like 80 feet. He was like 18 feet. Really? Yeah, he's like, I, I just got vertigo, thought it was upside down. He freaked out. So the plan, uh, the way I theorize right now, has changed a little bit. So we have ended up with one line down. So I like that. 
yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's safer for the recovery. Uh, so you're gonna take, you're gonna go down. You're gonna, we're gonna send the bag and the tank down, two tanks. Zip it down to the boat. All right. When I get back up topside, they'll give you the go. Yeah. Because you'll still be on call. And or if there's some some reason we lose communication because of death, we'll undo the rope and you'll feel like there's nothing on it. Mm -hmm. So I mean? so 60 seconds after you undo the rope. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That that's the fail proof if we lose comms. Okay. Yeah. Simple enough. It's been a while since I put this on. <laughs> For the holidays. I still have some holiday cookies attached to me. <laughs> once I, once the boat pops and everything, I don't know where I'm gonna be. So I need all boats clear out of the area because now I'm coming up for my safety stuff as well. This could be probably, I'm guessing by the time they rig it, 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes from now. divers in the water right now. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of the critical pieces to diving that tells them how much oxygen they have left uh, is missing, so they can't both go to the bottom. So Doug's only going probably 20, 30 feet deep, um, while Jared's gonna go all the way down and rig up the boat by himself, uh, which could take a little bit longer because it's always better to have two hands down there, especially since we don't know what the visibility is gonna be like. Also, we just realized that we don't have comms. Something's not working right with the, with the underwater comms system, so. We're kind of playing it by bubbles right now. Basically, once uh, once Doug comes to the surface, uh, then we're going to basically prepare for. It's, we're kind of guessing, here. yeah, because uh, because the boat is going to come up long before Jared comes up. Because Jared has to come up and do what's called the safety stop, so that he doesn't uh, get uh, basically nitrogen narcosis or something like that, whatever it is. So basically so he doesn't die. So uh, all the plans that we had to know what was happening completely changed. Because so, originally both divers were gonna go down, one was gonna come up and say, okay, we're oh, rigged. And now that's not happening. So this is gonna be this just got a whole lot more that was good. That was good. You go down to 30? Uh, I went that way, way. I went about 75. Really? Deep yeah. Down there? Yeah. In the dark. Uh, it's, it's pretty damn dark. Yeah. But still more visibility than what I'm used to. 
You're gonna need to cut that line. Give me that blue line. Yeah. Cause I want to, in case he needs to come up. Uh, do you want to? I still have a line down to him if I have to go down for an emergency. No, How long has he been no, down there now? Orange buoy up there, please. The I'll tell you. Fifteen seconds. Uh, six minutes. Six minutes. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we start. We start getting near. Yeah. 12, 15 minutes. Is, it's a problem. Cool. Undo this. Undo this. Yeah. Give me this. Here, I got. I got a buoy on here for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Do that. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Let's put it. Put it right here on this. Are you on the buoy on that? Yeah, take that up. Throw a loop on. Ah, okay. There's not going to be any warning because we don't have comms. So the best we can do is prepare for him. We don't have comms. Right now, he's he's got it. He's got the probably got a, the second bag on it right about now. Technically, you don't have to move. You don't have to move. It's straight. It's straight under me. It's gonna come straight up. It's not gonna go to a side or anything. Three and a half minutes. I thought 12 was the red zone. There's a 15. Oh, I think I see him. Where we running? Oh, good. Probably we're removing the. There he is. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that. Yeah. Alan, how are you going to close my mouth? So I now know that from there, if we take that back down, I need to go down another eight feet and then follow the wall this way, ten feet. That's where your boat's at. That is the moment I have a hundred foot. Good time tomorrow. Then we can keep this gear back up. And now we have a new direct line straight to the boat that's only going to take you to the track to the Go down and put a line to the boat. To the front of the boat. <laughs> How old are you? 100 foot though. I hit, I hit over 100. Yeah. Because I, cause I went down. Yeah, you hit that real quick. You know, yeah. It goes from where the boat is to 125 feet really because, quick. Because I, knew that, because I knew that it was at 95, so... I headed down, made my way left, overshot the boat. I knew that I went too far, if that's the direction right. it was. 
knew that I had gone too far, so that's when I came back up to 80 or so, and then that's when I ran into it coming back along the wall. So anyway, that's like in rivers too. That's how you'll find things when you like lose a line or something. You just have to be um, aware of hill sites, and that's how you can keep track of which direction you're going. Yeah, now he's got to head down eight and over ten. So what is he at now? Um, so he should be at 78, 80 feet right now, making his way over. So I don't expect any more than another five, ten feet to go out of this that we've got right here. Yeah, I see a light. Here's the thing, we gotta think about this, if we end up using four tanks down there, I only brought five for the surface to float it above the surface. We'll drag it back. One, one tank at surface will fill two, three thousand, or fifteen hundred pound bags. So we have one more that will fill and lift the back. We should be alright, it'll be close. Jair's down there now. He's going to be bringing the bags up to the boat. After that, once the bags are rigged, he's then going to be taking the tanks over to the bags, slowly filling them, and then backing away from the boat. If that boat starts to lift with him on it and propels him in any way, he's not going to be able to control his ascent top side, and that's that can be deadly. So this is it's very critical and methodical the way that this has to be done in a safe manner. And then not only that, we're using one hook on the front of the boat. So the second it gets to the surface, it's a race to get other bags on it. So that's that's one thing we got to prepare for too. So when that when that pops, we need to have bags ready to go in. We're not 70 feet. Air is 3200. <laughs> Jared, you got a copy? I have two bags hooked up. I believe it's at the uh, front of the boat, but I don't know. It could be the back. Okay, so he's floating the first bag. Right, uh, I have uh, one tank hooked up to the front. Air in one of the bags. Alright, I have one tank hooked up to one bag with some air in it. I'm going 
over for a second tank. Okay, he says he has his first first bag is fully connected. Second bag's going on. All right, the uh, second tank is hooked up. It could be the same bag, but I'm not sure, but we're gonna put some air in this one. Feels like it's a different bag. Back in the boat, I believe. It is not moving yet. We got some serious movement right here. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. See that crater of water that it's making right there? That's uh, that's just, I mean, it's literally pushing water up to the surface. There's <laughs> Jared. Who the frick makes boats full of lead? <laughs> oh, I think I did have some lead that thing there. is heavy. Yeah, there might be. Actually, be a lot of lead. <laughs> so, do you have two ba full bags? No, I have one full bag. One of the issues is, is at one point when we it left up here, I believe that the valve was closed. Because of that, I did not recheck it, so I lost a full tank of air under there. It took three tanks to actually fill one bag because of the depth that we're at. So, right now, come to find out, I'm actually at the rear. As far as I know. Yeah. So the little, your little latch, is that at the back of the boat? The little latch. Your, your, your back seat completely yeah, folds yeah, up at the front. Yeah, folds up at the back. So I'm at the back is where I'm at. Okay, there's a tow hook right there. The, yeah, so that's where I'm on. So I'm on the rear tow hook. Okay. So that's good? Stuck. The one in the back, in the middle. Yeah, the, 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 in the middle, seat folded up, and there's the, like a bar, yep. that would be a tow hook. We can pull from that. Um, from the ski from the ski bar. The, I mean, the bar is fine. I just it's like that's just eighth inch aluminum though. It's hooked to. Oh, through the back of the. Right now, I have one, I have three thousand pounds on that right now. It's a good stress test for you. Hey, yeah. do you think that we should uh, try to pull away from the canyon wall? Are we getting snagged on rocks at all? No. It's you you are now standing straight up, so it's standing on its nose. Okay. So that's good news in that we don't we're no longer in the silt. I can actually see things now. Okay. So we're happy about that. Do we want uh, do we want Doug taking a winch line down on this run? We don't have enough air. I, uh, at this point, we need more air from our trailer. Because right now we only have one aluminum here, right? If we got that tank, that's and only eighteen hundred in your tank. Do you, have a, do you have enough to go down and hook the winch line? Okay, so we need air. Um, we can boogie back in this fast and get air. Uh, well, what about the winch line? What can we do with this? Is there anything we can do with the winch line? If we bring it up with the winch line. If, if you don't feel like 1,500 pounds is going to sink in front of this. It's, I don't think it's going to. If you're comfortable jetting down with a winch line, do not hook into the tow hook that I'm on. You're, the back of the boat is now fully exposed. What's the best hook back there to hook into? So there's going to be two like eyelet hooks below the swim deck on okay. the transom. All right. Um, those are what to tie down the boat with. Those are going to be what we want to hook onto. So basically, go down there, feel for the rudder or for the. There's going to be a thruster down there. I didn't even see a, a swim deck on the back of it. Let, let me confirm. The, the back of it is kind of like. Does it go like this? No, that's the front. So I'm, I am on the front. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a pickle fork Batman design. One of the compartments is open. Oh yeah, all the front compartments do so open. I am on the front. Yeah, you're on the front. Okay. And that we know is going to... We, yeah, we, we feel comfortable with that. Okay. So if you can winch line down to that, then I, I, I would like to unanchor, pull out that way, and then uh, give her a go. Yeah, I mean, the biggest challenge right now is Doug making sure he can get a good connection on the front of the boat. Uh, us having enough winch line off the front of the boat to be able to get down to hook up. If we don't have enough winch line, then we're going to have to drop an extension uh, piece of rope or wire or whatever that he will have to hook on. And then we'll winch up, assuming the winch is able to pull the boat up. Then we'll have to tie it off, go back down, and then be able to pull it all the way up to the top. Basically a, a, like a two-stage lift, which I'm trying to avoid. I think we're close to having enough cable, but um, basically Doug, as you're going down, it's 
underneath the jack. You're not gonna. You're not gonna have any comms, right? Huh? You want any comms, right? No, I don't. So have any comms. basically, when you're out of line, we're just gonna stop pre spool, and that'll you'll know that you're out of line. Okay. And so, do with it what you will. If you can hook to the boat, great. If not, then use your extension. Right. Are there any more bags that they're gonna try to inflate down there? Or? No, we don't have the air for it. Uh, We've got just enough air for Doug to go down and get hooked up, and then. We're gonna move everybody to the back, and then we're gonna run the winch and see what she does. Did we, uh, did you say we had like a compressor or something to actually fill it once it's Com up? Compressor is not working. Uh, we didn't we didn't have the what we needed. So this is a, this is a hail mary. If this doesn't work, if the winch isn't working or whatever, then we're just gonna let the boat rest where it is. We're gonna hopefully keep that bag inflated. Come back in the morning with fresh tanks, float it the proper way, and do it like that. But. If this does get up to the surface right now, we're basically gonna try to drag it over to that beach um, and then hopefully get it as close to the shore as we can, which is gonna be a little tricky. I'm gonna have to kind of like nose it around, but I think we will be able to do it. Um, we'll see what happens. Well, basically what we want right now is we want the front of that boat sitting on like a, a solid surface. Let's get it done. And I believe that he's got it hooked up and that he's just doing his safety stop on the way up now. Because he's been down so long, he's kind of making his way that direction now. Um, you know, we don't have any movement going on either one of the lines. So I feel good that he did what needed to be done. The hope of this is that he was able to get the cable all the way to that rather than having to use that extension of that 10 foot loop that we gave him. If he did that, then we have to do an additional stage but let's get it assured, bottom it out, and then we'll figure it out from there. I got it hooked in two spots. Yay! And, and that, and that O-ring's gonna hold. Nice. The weld on that sucker's pretty badass. And the cable went straight to the boat? Yeah, so on that weld, there's two I-rings. There's a big one and a little one. I got a carabiner through both the holes and the hook and the bag. So if one fails, the other will catch him. We're green light to winch, guys. It's coming up. And that front of the boat's not even going down, so it didn't need that much more pressure. So you got water coming, see the bubbles right here? The reason why you have bubbles is because that uh, lift bag is completely full. Bag is four feet underwater. Four feet underwater? No, we're good. We can get this to the beach now. Okay. How do you feel that you're like super close to getting this? Boat? I feel really good, man. I feel really, really good. We still have a hell of a challenge ahead of us to be able to beach a boat that's currently still you know the tip of it is is at least 10 feet underwater 
We're headed towards that beach over there. Then we're gonna work some winch magic. But if it sinks over there, then it's just gonna land on a sandy shore and that's much easier to work with because we could run a snatch block from our winch up to the shoreline from this winch, drag it up on the beach, pump the water out. We'll be home in time for dinner. Out of the water yet, but I mean, it's no longer in 80 feet of water. I'd like to attach it to the back of the boat now, if possible, because I want to try dragging it. So, before you do that, before, before do that. you drop it, let's take two of your loop straps and hook one to each one of those Oops. hooks Oops. in the front. Yeah. Then just throw it on a buoy at the yeah. moment so that way it's up and floating. That way we don't have to get back in the water and swim because we can clearly pull it up out of the water right now. And then we can put our I, I know, but we have a tower. Once the beach, once that hits the beach, the tower is going to stop me. So, uh, I like what you're saying, though. If you, if you the, the problem is, I, I want to be able to use the winch to be able to pull it as close to the back of the boat as possible because I will just drag it. So close. So freaking close. This is the part where we just want to push it and take risks, but I think the smart thing to do is to wait until tomorrow until we have all the uh, air tanks that we need, put some airbags on it. It'll pop right up. We'll be able to uh, empty it out. And then, uh, then we won't be trying to, because if we pull it right now from a wrong angle and it pulls like uh, part of the bow off, then we have a hole in the boat that's not going to be able to like be watertight. We won't be able to pump water out and keep it watertight. So we're going to play it safe. Doug's down there right now, just checking it out, uh, getting kind of a surveying the situation to know what we're looking for tomorrow. And uh, then we'll uh, we're we'll back in the morning with airbags. We still have our work cut out for us tomorrow. Right now we woke up super early. My head is fuzzy from all the diving that we did. I was down like a really long time on that last one. Like I went to like. 288 PSI is all I had left. My right forearm is still on fire. Like, I mean, it's just like throbbing. But I look forward to coming back in the morning and get this boat out. Yeah, absolutely. What, what took place today was a huge success. We, we got the boat from nearly 100 feet deep over here in less than 20 feet of water. 20 feet of water. So tomorrow... Our biggest challenge though tonight is we need to find where we're gonna fill off all our tanks because yeah. if we don't get the tanks filled early tomorrow morning, I don't know. I'd like, do we have to go three and a half, four hours to Provo? Do we have to go to Salt Lake? I don't Who's know. Who's open tomorrow on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. Definitely. That's exactly what we're going to do right now. We're going to get back, make sure everything's stored correctly, get some air in the tank. Hopefully we can do it tonight. I think we can do it tonight. Tonight? Air? Absolutely. Absolutely not. You that tired? <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to have to drive tonight to start making our way that direction and then be ready first thing in the morning when they open at 10 a.m. Okay. And they're not opening at 8. I mean, right. dive shops are just too late. We'll, 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 we'll get with Heavy D and, and put our heads together. If we have to make a few phone calls, if he have to make a few phone calls, Mike may have some contacts. Really, we just need a fire department. Yeah. That's all we need. You know? That's all we need is a fire department. They don't all have the stuff we need, though. We don't know unless we go. All right. If you haven't done so already, Hit the subscribe button, like and share, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about what happened today. So we came together last night. We were able to get some air in our tanks. We're headed right back out right now. We got the boat sitting in 20 feet of water. Should have it floating here soon and all pumped out. Four bags, one wind in the front. 90 minutes, fingers crossed. I'm always optimistic. Yeah. We're going to have a $400,000 boat, her body, floating, towed back, up out of water in no time. Uh, you know I'm not at Spoken this morning. Good to see you. We've got the uh, plenty of air now. So our game plan this morning is we're going to put Doug in a suit. Okay. We're going to start with four bags at the back of the boat under the swim platform. 
from top side, we're gonna put the tanks on the pontoon boat when it gets here. We're gonna run an air hose down. We have a 50 foot air hose to each one of those bags. So one at a time from top side, then we'll then turn it until the bag is either full or out of air in that tank. Okay. That's gonna bring the back end up. From the front, that's where you'll end up winching it because that hook broke, we need to figure out what the best place is that we can get some type of a lift on the front, get everything above the water line, and then we can throw the two inch pumps on it, pump it up, get it flowing. So let's do two bags first, Amen. one on each side at the back. Does that work? Bottom, yeah, so put this under the swim platform on one side and I'll give you the second one. Does that make sense? It should be easy, it should be really easy. Doug's heading down with the first bag right now. The way the back of a boat works is, or wakeboard boats they have, at the back, then you have the swim platform that's usually even with the water. And then underneath of that is where we have the tie downs when you have it on a trailer to keep it from bouncing off the trailer. So that's where we're gonna take a carabiner, put a bag on each side right now, inflate both of those bags, and then if we need more, then we'll head down with two more bags, one for each side, and inflate those two bags as well. Once we get the back floating, then it's gonna be up to Dave to get the front lifted up above the water line, so that way we can then pump it out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this hose onto the tank, then we're gonna run a, a, a 50 foot hose down so that way it will inflate each bag, but we can do so topside. bad valve on one of the bags. So it went back down, so we're putting a second newer bag on it. Is it filling? That boat's gonna stay from a foot, right where you're at. You're gonna stay at that. The loose valve is too loose. The loose valve is too loose? Too weak. Too weak. Too weak. Too weak. This is too weak. Oh, the release valve. Oh, on j just on the one bag. Shouldn't be. Yeah. Can you tighten them? Was there air even going into it? Was there air going into it? Bags are filling. Yeah. It's not strong enough. I just need to take tanks down with me. That, that compressor is slowing us down. It's not a compressor, it's the tanks. I'm going right off the tanks. Huh? I'm going right off the tanks. Well, it's not strong enough. It's like the, the bags are like a quarter of the way full. And then the release valves are letting all the air out. For, I mean, they shouldn't. 
because that first one filled just fine. But, but the release valves just keep dumping the air. On both bags or all three bags? Well, they're balancing themselves out, you know? Right. So. Are they completely full or no? No, no, not even. Like none of them are, all of them are half, at least half. Okay. So, I gotta switch my tank, I'm out of here. I'm like at 50 PSI. Okay. Well, let's put you on, swim to shore, switch that out. Un undo us right here real quick though. So, the bags are on there right now, are those the ones that are completely, uh, like a pillow, pillow bags. Pillow, yeah. yeah. But he says that based upon what he's got and how low he's hooking, he would much rather just put the open bottoms on there. Yeah. Uh, so let's also head next to them. Yeah, let's go park there. And let's go drop, we're gonna drop two tanks, we're gonna pick yeah, up two there. more tanks. I just don't wanna get by the, I wanna stay away from this boat, so go to the other side. So that's the open bottom? Okay. We have three open bottom? All right, I just need, I probably only need one, but let me take two open bottom. All right, so take those two tanks off. And then look. Yeah, it's too much for them underwater at the moment, so. And then as far as tanks, as far as tanks, let me have, um, let me have the uh, 2200, the one that says 22 on it. And the other one says 22. We want to make sure the next bag he puts on is going to float it. We want to make sure we're anchored to you so it doesn't take off. No, they're going to connect that to his boat. Giving you a line also to this boat. Alright. You pull pull us over to him. That middle one, a pillow one? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, anybody go grab this one. We got our lift bags on the rear end of the boat. I have the winch cable to the front end of the boat. We're going to anchor an anchor up there with a snatch block on it. So we're going to run the winch from the front of Heavy D's boat into the snatch block down to the front of the boat, pulling the boat up. And we're hoping we can get the boat up far enough that we then can be able to continue to pump water out. Should be all downhill from there. I think it's a, everything that's happening right now is exactly how I would do it with this circumstance. I like it. Good heads coming together. Despite <laughs> all the loop arounds earlier. You know, at the end of the day, here's the thing, the lesson in all of this is you go into something with a plan, be prepared to for that plan to be an A, B, C, D, E, F, and maybe G is going to work. But don't give up because in the end, you should succeed. Talk about recoveries. You know, they always have the mysterious challenges that arrive during them. This oh, one no. definitely had a share. No challenge at all. I mean, it's like we go into it with a plan, we execute the plan, and we're done, and then off to lunch. Off to lunch, that's what it is. And two days later, but uh, eventually we are off to lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every obstacle that did arise, we, we got around it. The boat's here to the surface. They're digging the anchor right now, really deep. So we're gonna pull the boat completely out of the water, pump it out, 
drag it back onto the water, float it back to the marina. And I have heard they're also gonna throw some tubes behind the boat that's being pulled by the boat in uh, 40 miles an hour back to the marina. Oh, it's gonna be great. Be this awesome. is not over yet. Stay tuned because there's still a lot more to come. incredible I always like it when again we come into it being very optimistic oh yeah one dive one bag one tank we're gonna pop up doesn't always turn out that way but you know what now it's giving me more time to learn everybody's names we've had some incredible uh, you know breakfast and dinners and you know just time together out on the water got a little farmer's tan going on oh, yeah, yeah. I can't think of a better life right now yeah I mean I, mean, it's I still like our boats Oh yeah, our boats and our like, boats. Are our, our boat never never sinks. Like we can put like fill the entire boat up, and oh, it yeah. still doesn't sink. Oh yeah, we <laughs> we ran sonar with the water all the way to the brim, and we're still going. Yeah, that was great. I love it. At the end of the day, we are pulling away. This one wasn't your fault, but you know, as a good best friend, you're always wrangled into gotta, all these things. You gotta be there for your bro, man. <laughs> the ship goes down, you help pull back up from the bottom. That's right, that's what today was about. Everybody coming together to get Dave's boat out of the water. Thanks for being here and watching another episode. We'll see you on the next one.